Here we are, 12 hours later. Yeah, it's been <laughs> it's been 12 hours. <laughs> now, this is not a fast process at all. This is something that takes time and it cannot be rushed. It's very, very tempting to reach over there and try and pick the shell off of them. But I need to let you know, if you're ever going to incubate eggs, Keep this in mind. This is the most important advice I could give you. The chicks are not ready to come out of their shell yet. It takes them time. They've just poked holes through the shell and you can see them working on it right now. And uh, they will slowly go around the shell. You can see the progress they've made. I now have four of them that are working on, oh, nope, five now. Yep, five of the ones on the bottom are working on their shell at various stages. Now inside the shell, the baby chick is not fully ready yet. Uh, I've actually made the mistake in my early years of trying to help them out of the shell and that, that ended up disastrous because inside they have a little bit of a yolk sac that's not all the way inside their body. Yes, their body is literally a little open right now and if you open up that shell and pull them out, part of their insides can actually come out. And I know this sounds bad, but this is a warning that you need to know. Um, they need to go on their own for a couple days and they can, uh, they have that little egg yolk sac uh, that's hanging outside of them. And then once, uh, as they're doing this and they're trying to get out of the shell, they're absorbing this into their body. And that sustains them with moisture, with calories, and with food. Now they can get oxygen through that shell just fine. They need no help whatsoever. And little by little, as their strength dictates, they can go around this shell and just trim it off and eventually just pop it like a little door and then they flop out. And at this point, you still don't want to help them. You want to let them dry off a bit because they still have their blood vessels connected to the uh, inside of the shell. And if you pull them out and it's not quite time for them, it could bust a blood vessel or rip the last of that, uh, that yolk off of their gut and you don't want to do that. Chicks are fine. Once they get all the way out of the shell, they even don't need to eat for a couple days. Eat or drink. They're perfectly fine. They're going to look wet and weak and that's how they're supposed to look. But you can see that they're really working hard to get out of here. They've been doing this for ages, you know, and... Um, it's something that, oh, it's beautiful. The one on the right, he's really working hard or she's really working hard and the other ones are catching up. So then uh, this is about maybe five o'clock at night and I'm afraid that they may not make it out until later on tonight or first thing in the morning. But I can guarantee you very soon we're going to have little baby chicks because they're strong, they're working really hard and they really are dying to meet you. Now, I understand that this is not the best view you're going to get of the chick. And that's because as soon as he hatched, the shell popped open. And this happened right after I turned off the camera. I turned off the camera, went upstairs, ate a quick dinner, raced back down, and I saw this. This is what I saw. And uh, what happens is the moisture from inside the shell, and there is quite a bit of moisture in there, and the chick is soaking wet when he or she hatches. What that does in a closed incubation system is it causes a lot of humidity. And you can see that the, the uh, humidity is all over the glass, but still you can see him. And when they do hatch, you will see that they're attached to the shell by an umbilical cord. And they'll also be kind of upside down, a little bit uh, uh, off, off balance, and they'll be flopping all over the place and screaming. That, by the way, is normal. Please do not try to help them. This is what they need to do. They need to kick. They need to move around. This gets their muscles going, gets the blood flowing to them. That's what they're supposed to do. The moving of their legs and stuff and their neck uh, enables the blood to start flowing and filling out their legs. And uh, so you just got to keep the incubator closed. If you open it up, they can get a chill and this can harm them. So I'd say about maybe after 20 minutes or so, generally an hour uh, at the most, what they're going to do is the, the umbilical cord will shrivel up really fast and detach itself from the shell. And then the, these uh, chicks will start drying off just a little bit and then they'll be able to sit on their stomachs. But uh, what they'll also do, as, as this one is doing right now, is uh, they fumble, they, uh, they throw themselves all over the place, and they start knocking the other eggs around. 
And what this uh, effect is, is that it spurs the other eggs because the other eggs are being jostled. And I think what this does is it causes the other chicks to hurry because you have to get hatched in a certain amount of time because mom isn't going to wait around. Once the majority of the eggs are hatched, the mom will eventually take off. So after a couple of days, anything that isn't hatched generally dies. That's kind of a sad thing, but it's survival of the fittest. So um, this one is, we have one in there. And as soon as he dries off just a little bit, I'm going to put him in the brooder. And uh, the brooder is set up over on the other side of the room. It has a heat lamp and some soft cloth. And I want to make sure that this chick is a little bit drier and also is detached from its shell before I take it out of here. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is give him some time, turn off the lights, and uh, it'll give the, the chick some uh, time to calm down in the dark and not be quite so excited. We'll be back soon. It's been 24 hours now. I didn't bring any of the chicks out because uh, I wanted to uh, let the first one dry out and it was late at night so uh, I left it in there overnight. Now when you are hatching chicks you want to make sure that once the chick is uh, fully hatched and away from the shell and doesn't have the umbilical cord you get it out of there and put it into the brooder because what will happen is the fully hatched chicks if they can run around they'll actually walk all over the newly hatched chicks the ones that are just coming out of the shell and that can hurt them so you want to separate them now this is going to be the first time I've opened this up I can see that there's activity going on in there quite a bit has happened overnight and there we go I want to do this relatively quickly so that uh, the eggs that are still hatching don't chill so I'm going to grab these and put them into the brooder Good morning, little ones. This is the giant plastic tub that I <laughs> bought for them. It wasn't easy bringing it home in the car. I had to jam it into the back seat, but it, it, it'll do the job. In the bottom, I threw a couple old shirts. I don't want to throw any shredded newspaper or any kind of uh, small things that they can peck at because I want them to get used to the area before they start eating. I have two bulbs hanging here and these are brooder bulbs. They emit no light but they do put out uh, heat and it's just enough to keep them warm. I keep it above where they can peck but I also leave areas where they can escape if it's too hot for them so they can go off to the side either way. You don't want to put them in there when they're just coming out of the shell and they can't walk because they might lay underneath there and be too hot and not be able to leave the area. So once they're able to walk they can be put underneath here and that way they can move around and go where they they need to go whether it's warm or cooler look at the difference in color and you can also hear the happy sounds this is where they're going to spend uh, the next few weeks of their life and they're going to peck from curiosity and they're not hurting each other they're just experimenting because they're brand new they were just born yesterday and they don't know the world but they're going to learn. They're from different mothers it looks like. One of them's from the golden, the golden one and one of them's from one of the blacks and one of them looks like she's from one of the little uh, Americanas. I don't know. It's hard to tell when they're mixed breeds like this but they're getting used to each other. They're just seeing each other outside of their shell for the first time. This is kind of nice and they will sleep a lot. They'll run around, have good fun and then all of a sudden they'll just drop and sleep. That's what little chicks do. I'm going to leave them alone for a while. I don't want to play with them. Well, actually, <laughs> yes, I do. I, I don't want to disturb them. I want them to get used to their new home and not stress them out because a stressed chick will get what's called pasted vent. And I'll talk to you about that some other time. But you don't want to stress your chicks. They're not a toy. I'm going to leave them alone and let them stay warm and get used to their surroundings. We'll come back later when a few more have hatched. And then there were four. Yep. I took a fourth one out of the incubator after he dried off and you can hear that high-pitched uh, peep. That's the sound that they make when they're unhappy, whether they're frightened, hungry, cold, scared. That's their warning sound that brings the mother around. And then once they're comfortable and they're content, they'll make little cheeping sounds. What he's trying to do is cuddle up to his 
friends, his brothers and sisters. They've been in there for about four to five hours and I put in their water bowl. They haven't gone over to it yet, but there's no rush because they can still go one or two more days without water. So I, let, I like to let them find it themselves if possible. And they always do. Uh, their curiosity will eventually get the best of them and they'll walk over here and start drinking. What that'll do is it'll teach them that that's water. And then as the new ones get put in there with these ones, they'll be taught by the older ones where the water is. So I don't have to teach all of them. And I'm not reaching my hand in there and playing with them or cuddling with them because I'm not so much needing them to bond to me because once they go out into the coop, they don't need to be bonded to me. They need to be bonded to each other to make a flock. So I'm leaving them alone. I just sit up here and I just look at them from above and I talk to them so they get used to my voice so they're not scared. But basically that's all I do. Now I'm gonna hold off on putting food down there until tomorrow. They don't need food right away. They still have energy in the yolk sac that they absorbed into their abdomen right before hatching. They can go another one or two more days without food, so no problem at all. But the new one is trying to snuggle in with the other ones and um, he'll eventually find his place. They roll over like this every now and then and sometimes they'll even sleep like that. But that's just, <laughs> they have to learn. So for right now, he's a little comfortable, but see, they always find a way. Well, now we're into two days that they've been in their brooder and they're at various stages. There's a couple of them that are the oldest and then the, a little bit later on in that day another one hatched and just overnight last night uh, a few more hatched. Uh, there's a couple back in the incubator that are in intensive care because they had issues coming out of the shell. That's just how life is. Some of them are weak, some of them are strong. There are some that won't make it. You have to be ready for that when you're hatching your eggs because there are happy moments and sad moments. And uh, that's just how life works out. Their water was put in yesterday. And now, just right before I turned on the camera, I put down a little bit of chick feed and uh, sprinkled it in nice and slow, close to the water so that they'll start pecking at the food and then uh, gradually move their way over to the water. Now there's one right in the middle over here, the little dark one. He just went in there this morning, so he's just kind of tired. He's just going to lay there. Now the one that's right next to him on the bottom, he was put in there last night. You can see he's kind of tiny and not moving. The other three, well, four. Oh, wow, there's more than I thought. They have quite a bit of energy, and they'll race around all, uh, all, all over the place, and then they'll just stop. They're little fuzzballs, aren't they? Oh, they're absolutely beautiful. I could sit here for hours, and I do. <laughs> I do. I have to admit, I do sit here for hours and just stare at them. And they don't mind. Now, they're just pecking at the food. You don't have to help them at all. Instinct uh, takes over. And they'll peck at it, throw it around, break it into little pieces. And this is just regular crumbled chick feed. And pieces will fly all over the place. That's okay. Now, one of them just landed in the water. I let that go because what will happen is they'll go over to the water. They'll see something in the water and peck at it and then realize that there's water there and then they'll start drinking. There's a bit of mess to clean up after the hatching. There's going to be a little bit of yolk and moisture and afterbirth. This is the mess that comes with the hatching process. I like to get this out of the incubator once the last egg has hatched. Soak it and then take it outside, scrub it clean. And you want to make sure you do that with your incubator. As soon as the hatch is over, go through it with bleach water or whatever disinfectant you use. Get it nice and clean because you don't want any bacteria forming in there. Because uh, hatching is an ugly process. And of course, we are going to have the few left over. And uh, it depends on how healthy your eggs were, how strong they were. Usually the first eggs of the season are not that strong. Uh, if you wait, until spring gets on and the, egg, the chickens are laying and the rooster is doing his business, the eggs will be stronger. These were weak eggs. They didn't make it. They uh, died in the shell at various ages. And it's really kind of sad that some of them didn't make it. But that's just how nature is. It's survival of the strongest. The weakest ones weren't meant to live. 
because they would have carried that genetic, the genetics of that on to the next line. So this is just how nature works. And I'm going to show you the leftover ones that aren't quite ready to come out of the incubator. They may or may not make it. But I wanted to show you this in the interest of showing all aspects of hatching. These are the late hatchers. And uh, this is the intensive care unit. I don't want to leave it open too long. This one here had a little bit of the yolk sac um, attached to it when it came out. And see, this is, the, this is what happens when there's an error in hatching. And it, that's not the one making the sound. That one probably won't make it. But I don't want to take it out yet. And these two, they may or may not. They're at various stages of recovery. Okay, I'm going to close it up. Aren't they beautiful? All different colors, shapes, sizes. They look up at you with just inqui in inquisitive eyes. These are the eggs that I had in the incubator. I was incubating them for 21 days, rotating them, uh, turning them every day, twice a day, making sure that they were comfortable and cozy. I started out with, uh, I think, 19 eggs. Four of them weren't fertile. And then that left me with 15 eggs. Out of the 15 eggs, I think I had maybe eight, nine or something like that hatch. A few of them passed away shortly after hatching. Uh, they were just weak. Uh, I guess genetics weren't kind to them. They were weak and passed away, so they're buried here on the farm. The little black one closest to us, see, see that little one just kind of hobbling around? You remember uh, I had a, a little one named Tiny Tim. Yeah, she was a sweetie. She was a little red one. This one's not related to her, but isn't it odd that she passed away in 2017 and here in 2018, a new one is born. She doesn't have spraddle or dislocated uh, a hip or anything like Tiny Tim did, but one of this one's feet is like a little claw that won't go normal. The other leg, I think, is a little bit normal, but this one kind of goes out to the side and it's a kind of a big club foot. As, as odd as this looks, and as sad as it may seem to some folks, the little bird is happy, healthy, eats, drinks, uh, moves around. So it's going to be a little special one, my new Tiny Tim. I have six little chicks here. They're going to stay in the voodoo garden for a few weeks until they're old enough to go into the chick cage out into the coop. Then I'll be showing updates on them on the Praxis 55712 channel. Until then, they're going to be in here, cheaping away, uh, nibbling on little pieces of plant that I tossed to them from the voodoo garden, the safe pieces of plant, like banana leaves and, and uh, 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 grasses and things like that, and enjoying the greenery here in the voodoo garden. But I wanted to give you a, a shot of these because I'm so proud of them, and I'm so happy with them. And it's new life. New life this year in the voodoo garden. Isn't it beautiful? Definitely well worth the effort growing these little birds and they're going to love living here on the farm. I want to thank you for joining me here in the Voodoo Garden for this short program. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Until next week, this is Ray and his little backup singers. We're out of here.